at all one and all so this is going to be a bit of a different video um, I've had a bit of play time with this um, tool recently and I thought I don't have a video of it um, I don't well I have an unlisted video um, but um, I don't have a video that's out for the you know everybody to see so this is going to be a video um, which is a demo it's not going to be an in-depth tutorial so obviously because of the nature of this tool it wouldn't be professional of me to put a video out explaining in detail how to use it um, just in case that information got into the wrong hand it's not to be awkward or or anything like that it's just obviously because of the nature of the tool it's as simple as that now if you do buy the tool you get a full instruction manual to use the tool um, as well as the accessibility to the videos um, within the GJ Locks page uh, website um, which gives a, a more of an explanation as well so a lot of people are going to be probably looking at this lock and sort of thinking what is it many people are probably never going to ever going to come across these or you know or there's going to be a few people that may have now this is a Gerda G1000 um, from Eastern Europe um, I think Russia and Poland typically have these I don't know about any other of the other Eastern European countries but I, I know that they, these are there um, fitted there and when I was living in London I was seeing these in North London and East London and some other areas there um, they were starting to come in now they were fitted predominantly on ex authority houses current council blocks and housing associations where they'd gone in replaced all of the doors made them for fire doors uh, and the doors came in and frames with these locks already mounted on them um, and that included like service cupboards cctv cupboards loft doors um, CCTV cupboards if I haven't already said that uh, as well as them being fitted to the communal doors as a means of emergency access so where you would typically have a fireman's drop key um, the fire brigade were able to use a girder key that they were supplied now the reason that these were fitted I'm assuming as well is because they're extremely versatile for master keying um, so it's possible I suppose when the, everything was being done that you could have one key would open everything um, but the limitations meant that you know no one else's keys was typically going to cross over because these rely on 16 pins okay so you've got four rows of four pins and due to the the the, the depths like the variations in the depths of these pins that gives a possible key combination of 4.3 billion possibilities so that's extremely vast um, and if you wanted to sit down and use every key to test this, you'd probably wouldn't even get a quarter of the way through. Um, you know, you imagine 4.3 billion keys in front of you and you've got to test each and every single one. Unless you was extremely lucky in the first one that you tried opening it. Um, no, I wouldn't want to try them odds. As far as I'm aware, I've not seen a pick as such for this lock. And even if there was, I don't think there'd be many people who'd want to spend the time to pick these other than for on the bench and kudos reasons, and I can understand that. But in terms of using it out in the field for this sort of work, unless you was into extremely covert type work, picking um, isn't really justifiable, I don't feel. Because of it, because of the four pins in four chambers, you would have to pick this lock four times to get one revolution okay so you would then have to do because this is double throw okay so you have to rotate the key twice to fully retract these bolts if it's that's if it's been locked fully the first time if someone had locked it and they'd only thrown it once you don't have to do it four times but that's still a huge task if it's been locked fully then it's two revolutions of the key so eight times you potentially would have, well, I'd say potentially you would have to pick that lock um, in order to get your door open. Now I'm aware of another company, uh, again Eastern European, who has made a, uh, it's not a pick, it's a decoder, but uh, for this lock. Now it relied on the floor within that lock, uh, a visual floor, enabled for them to sort of decode and then build a key. 
Um, but w if the floors weren't there due to age or um, wear and tear, then it wasn't very successful. Um, I don't know if they've updated it since. The last time I saw the tour in action, it hadn't been, but obviously you never know fully what's going on in the background. Um, whereas this tool relies on a different method, a couple of different methods in order to get the lock open. Now, this tool requires a fair amount of bench time. It's not something you can just take out of the van, go to a door and, and, and work on anything. I've put in a good few hours worth of practice with that, probably well, more than a good few hours, but on and off since I've had this tool. I, I, it's probably a good, I'd imagine, 15 to 20 hours in this tool um, because you're not, you, you, as much as a visual reference that you get from this, you still have to rely on a sense of feel and understanding how this lock works and how this tool works and combining the two to get you a working key. Now anyone who's got the time and patience to do that, um, you're going to do okay because there's not many people in the UK that I'm aware of that are going to be able to open these. There's not even a handful as far as I'm aware. Okay, So that could make you an extremely, um, put you in a position of, you know, where it's people are going to want you. There's going to be these fitted in places that need them open non-destructively. And if you're someone whose name gets popped towards them, then, you know, you're going to get the calls for them. And obviously you can charge accordingly. So it is worth learning to do it. Um, but as I said, these were for me when I was living in London. That's where I predominantly saw these. Um, as of yet, I've yet to see one here where I am now. But I'm assuming somewhere there will be at least a few fitted somewhere. But... Um, the likelihood of me coming across them at the moment doesn't seem possible at the moment. Um, okay, so as with anything, um, the GJ kit comes with everything that you need to get these locks open. Now, I'm not going to go into extreme detail of the how to use this tool. There's going to be some elements that I can't obviously show on camera because it's more to stop it you know from the knowledge being put out there for people uh, with the wrong intentions many of you are going to probably be able to work out what you know everything and that's fine as long as people have an understanding and you know it's going to make a lot of sense um but again as i said it's not to be awkward because if you purchase at all you get full instructions and, and everything uh, and you've got access to videos if need be and training out there in how to use the tool okay so let's get on with that I've done a quite a bit of waffle already so in the kit okay as I said you get everything that you're going to need uh, I'm not going to go into detail right now but as I go along hopefully a lot of that will become um, understandable now what you do have to bear in mind is as I said that these locks operate on like a cross pattern with the pins now because there's four rows of four, the closest pins on each of them four is what I'm going to use for the inner squares. And then I'm going to work my way out, okay? So the furthest pin away from me will be the four boxes the furthest away. Now the square notch here, obviously for those of you who do know, I don't really need to explain it, but those who've never come across these locks, I'm not sure how well this is going to come across on the camera, but you can see that there's a cutout notch in the top of that lock and that's what that square on the card represents okay so what you do need to ensure is that when you're filling this in you do it uniformly it's no good using that for the first pin neck in towards you and then on the next stack use here you need to keep it uniform um, because as I said the odds of getting it wrong and getting the lock open you know You've got better odds of winning the lottery, as far as I feel. Um, yeah, so you're going to see elements of what I'm doing. I'm not, going to, as I said, not going into too much detail. Um, but it, you, as I said, this is a tool that's going to require you to put in the bench time. Now, some of these, because I've done it a fair few times, I can do a lot of this by feel. Okay, 
Now that's not to be clever or or anything, it's just that obviously I'll put the bench time in. I'm doing it a bit cack handed. So make sure that's seated. So I'm going to work my way around and get all 16 of the reed. Okay. Now this lock has been opened previously. Um, it was a lock that I inherited from someone who went and changed the lock for someone who'd lost keys. They got the lock but no spare keys. Um, therefore they were happy to pass me on the, the lock and I used it as a means to practice. Go back in. I'm going to go around. Yep, so you've got to test all 16 pins, and as I said, you need to be accurate and using your feel because you can't solely rely on just the visual element because. Obviously you've got a bit of movement and you're going to get that in anything that you do. You, because of the way that the tool works you're going to get um, different feedback. So you need to be able to interpret what you're feeding. Around again. Now I'm kind of having to duck down in order to be able to see everything because of the cameras in the in the way. Yep. All the way in. Now we're on to the last last set of pins. Okay. So this lock has been open before, as I said. It's been open. Uh, probably a couple of times, once by myself, or no, twice by myself, sorry, um, and then once by someone else. Um, so I'm not going to sit here and claim that this one's fresh out of the box and it's never been opened before. Okay, so I've got all 16 of my reeds. Now, going forward, what I need to do is obviously build my key. Now as with anything, the preparation that you put in the front end, so getting our reeds, making sure that we've been accurate with them, and now with the prepping of our key, you need to ensure that the, every all of the time that everything is um, done to the best of your ability, okay? Because if you don't do it carefully and you're a little bit rough and ready with it, then you're not going to get the outcome that you need and then you know you're going to have flaws and then you're going to have to look at redoing it all again um, so the time and effort put in at the front end is going to benefit you at the back end okay now this next bit I'm not going to show on camera um, okay because it's a means of I need to prep this key and make it known so I'll keep my fingers and that into somewhat of a view um, but obviously as I said it's a bit sensitive some of the information that here so it doesn't take long to do we're nearly we're nearly done already Okay, now I need to enter the key into the lock, but I need to be extremely careful as I do so, so as not to damage the hard work that I've already done. Okay, so I need to gingerly insert that into the lock. Okay, so now we're in. Move this out of the way. 
Now the next process is the second stage of ensuring that we get an open and you need to be when you're turning this you need to keep everything square so let me now that we've done that let's stand this up a bit straighter okay so I, I need to apply a bit of torque um, just to get the key seated and sitting nicely within the lock and then we may have to do a little bit of um, fettling um, and then we should hopefully get an open so I'm going to make sure it's fully in okay and then we've gone already so it doesn't always go as quick as that it could take you a couple more minutes okay so now we've actually got a working key that's opening and closing the lock now what I would say is I wouldn't for the purpose because I'm doing it on the bench it's fine I wouldn't advise doing this multiple times you know do it once to get the door open do what you've got to do and then if you need to lock up then do it um, but I wouldn't advise keep going with it okay because as you've seen now you can get to a point where we've gone too far um, so you need to remember to get your open do what you've got to do and lock it so you've seen me open it and close it a couple of times um, so Hopefully that's been of interest to some people. You know, I know some people are never going to come across these, so it's probably irrelevant, but it's just nice to see something a little bit different. Um, and I've got some other videos to sort of come forward with this. Um, so, look forward to doing the next video. Stay humble.